Hi guys. So, world population. So I kind of want to clarify that I do not hate everybody. I don't hate the majority of people. I have a bunch of crazy theories that are in fact crazy. I know they are. <laughs> but I can't get them out of my head as a possibility of being, you know, somewhat true. <laughs> See, when I talk about suicide and how I wish it were legal, I, I want the preventative measures. I, I want people to feel better about themselves. I want society to be more accepting of death so that we understand how to enjoy life, how to make it better, not, not a competition of impact, of greatness, of wealth, and you know, or, or of greatness, so that we become wealthy. You know, th there's nothing more noble to me than pursuing being an artist who is famous later, with, with all the belief that you will be famous later, after you're dead. <sighs> I think that's the reason why things that cover abstract concept or like that like artists often do become famous after they're dead because it's it's abstract it, it's about the recognition of what their life impacted of what their life was so when you hear about these artists who suffer a great deal in their lives before they become artists or they suffer a great deal for their art. See, for their art just feels very indulgent. It, it doesn't, it feels indulgent. And it's not that I don't understand indulging that. It's that, that is what leads me to say things that are so very, very crass and uh, uh, distasteful, really, like saying, for sterilization and the world is too populated two-thirds of us just need to drop like it sounds so cold and callous just like that but I'm indulging the idea only on the basis of whether or not it is practical for everybody and do I want two-thirds of the people to die it painlessly drop dead oh my we all wish, right? <laughs> but to have that power ourselves, it, we reluctantly wish that. And then, to me, I like the idea of getting to a point where we all willingly control our population with either what we do as a contributing factor or with our laws in order to make things more sensical. Now, I am against eugenics, but other people think that forced sterilization is better than eugenics. You know, when it comes to suicide in particular, it's, there's these people who are just filled with pain. It, it comes out in their art, even when they try to do something nice, it, it fills everything that they, they see. And they spend a great deal of their time trying to get out only to be stopped by other people. And it's not that we shouldn't stop them. It's that when you're going to send somebody to a place that is going to strip you of all your clothes, put a very, very heavy white thing on, on you, and put you in a cell that is dark, very, very metal, very metallic, very cold, very and make you feel like an animal or like you have no rights, no freedom. When that's the way you already feel, I can see how that would work in an extreme case, but I just don't see the purpose of it. I don't, 
if you can spend a year or several years with this person who feels this pain, from, let's say they're 14, but God knows I slept every single day from the time that I was 12 until I was about 14 and a half. I slept as much as I could until I was 16. And uh, a great deal of it, I was suicidal. Now, I'm not one of those people who could give up. But what if I had been? What if nobody understood ever? You know, it's you can take a person to a hospital, but these people are not going to ask the questions <laughs> that we want to be asked. And sometimes they do, sometimes at work, sometimes. But I know if I hadn't gone, if I had been forced over and over and over again into a situation, if I hadn't had the mother that I had, if I had been forced to be in those hospitals, in those clothes, in those cells, constantly, it would have driven me, driven me there. It would have drove me to that. But on the other hand, I wasn't one of those people and I didn't go through that when it, it would have been the most traumatizing. I think if we had that in place, not to expect the suicide, but to expect, but, but to talk about it in major, major threats, because people are going to avoid it. People who come across it, who are suicidal, are going to think very mixed thoughts and start talking about it, even when they're not talking about their own. And it just, it could do a lot of good even in the talking about it and arranging such that if you can actually let the doctor talk to you for a year, try to convince you otherwise, try every single thing, and you can still let them push that plunger or give you the button. If you can push that button, I mean... It's not a bad idea to let people's lives be in their own hands. When it comes to, I see, like, if we could just get rid of this whole chemotherapy, if we could just stop putting additives in our food. But I'm not operating on the assumption that these things will change anytime soon. I am operating with what I have. I, I'm considering all these things and deciding that suicide ought to be legal and abortion needs to be free. Uh, sterilization needs to be free. A sterilization needs to be forced on those who, you know, after a number of violent assaults, after a num after a couple of rapes or, you know, several allegations, several, I would, I would have to say seven, several allegations you might want to investigate or you might want to put the legislation here. No, not after several allegations, but if one of them sticks, and it has been several, snap. Why give these women more to worry about? And, you know, we can... We can't really license babies unless men are willing to be temporarily you know but there's the pill for the men there's all of this stuff it's just that I'm operating under the assumption that sexual sexual abuse is not going to go away and when I say it's not going to go away I mean my my family my spirits generational foreseeable future it's not going to go away it's 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 in some way or another it's never really going to go away but in within my species within my breed within my generation after generation after generation my my great 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 granddaughters and sons not having to worry about it you know, knowing what it is, but not really having any need to even think of the concept. 
to hear it and not understand. And have absolutely zero reason to want to. I, I it, it's not, I think part of my spirit could live out there, you know, my energy could live out there until that becomes a thing, that, that becomes a possibility, that becomes completely 100% real for one of my blood, or one of my, you know, kin, like spirits, kindred spirits. I'd like for it to happen, but I've never not known a world without sex in my life. You know, I, I, memories, but they're not good memories. There's still talk of incest, even though we didn't know what that was. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what's going on in my life or what I do. So much as these concepts really matter enough to be talking, talked about in Neutral tones. <sighs> no judgment. I mean, it's not a disease. It's a choice. I just feel the same way about addiction. Giving people a way to say yes to their inhibitions, to say yes to their wants, to their desires, and taking away any responsibility is the wrong thing to do. It just is. I don't care how bad your DTs are, you cannot blame side effects that you chose to, to drink yourself into. You don't, you don't, there was 30, 40 days ago when that wouldn't have been an excuse. You know, you wouldn't have actually been able to feel it like a disease. 30, 40 days ago, a year ago, a year from now, <laughs> three, you know, three months from now, you could be fine if you make the choices. It's not like it's easy. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's not that hard either. You know, uh, I'm sure my mother's smoking while she was pregnant with me. And the fact that generations of my family on my mother's side, who I was mostly influenced by, which, you know, does develop the genetics from her side of the family to be more prominent, which is why my face, I still look like my dad, but in person, I look a lot more like my mom now, but that makes it harder, more closely like a disease but it's still a choice. I still pick up the pack and decide whether or not to smoke that cigarette, that many cigarettes, that pack that day, or any cigarette any day. Uh, it's still a choice. So because of that, I kind of look at all of the choices, you know, the choices that people do make and they are unfathomable, really. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong about why pedophilia exists. It exists to protect our children. As messed up enough as that is, if being gay can be a direct result of your mother being under stress while you were certain kinds of stress while pregnant with you, and that can activate certain genetic markers uh, making, you know, the kid more suitable to deal with climate in which they have to be helpful. You know, there's, there's stress. There's a lot of stress around, you know, a, a woman needs to be stronger. A boy needs to be more compassionate in order to deal with such. So if that's possible, then it is, where are they going with this? <sighs> if that's possible, then it is, it, 
very much possible that being psychologically more open or uh, more capable of comprehending multiple facets, multiple trains of thought can send you into, into places that normally people wouldn't be able to see. And if that is a, you know, if it's in your family line to be intelligent and the person who messed you up is your father, they're extremely intelligent, you're extremely intelligent. As you become older in this abusive situation, you became, become more capable of perceiving a person's emotions before they react on them, or act on them, rather. Uh, you're capable of reacting to things that haven't happened yet in order to be prepared. Which makes children faster learners, smarter, yes, more emotionally erratic, but perhaps that will get the attention on the problem whilst also protecting the child and see when the attention is on the problem, women are more protective of their children as a generational thing. So to me, it it's not that it's a disease per se. It's not that it's genetic per se. It's that if testosterone makes you want to kill people <laughs> and estrogen makes you want to care for people, <clears throat> then estrogen will give the benefit of the doubt to all the killing with testosterone is doing. And hmm, not entirely sure. If we are killing more than we are breeding, I can see it becoming a genetic thing. I think that would be extraordinarily rare, like the one out of ten chance, maybe maybe one in 20, but, um, and then for the most part, it would make ch uh, women more likely to lead men, but also more likely to only have one child and to only protect that one child, making it more selfish ultimately, but possibly more compassionate as well. But I'm, <sighs> God only knows where such a deviation came from. God only knows. I I can I, I think I'm right that that's a possibility. What if such things can exist? The idea of choice becomes pretty much something that shouldn't be a free at all. A right. It's just not. not when it comes to kids, not when it comes to, you know, if death is something that we don't get to choose at all, but we do get to choose whether or not we end somebody else or our own, then it becomes more livable, but if we cannot live with it or anybody else having control over their own deaths, then we have to curb our... We have to curb ourselves. We have to stop. Well, we need to stop feeling as much pleasure. We, we need to stop being so sexualized. We need to stop having babies. We need to, legislation that controls ourselves. I mean, the choice at the end of the day is choosing to be responsible and then choosing to be happy. In that order, So I don't know. I just, I think that this, these big things that maybe I'm not so clear about. I, I want people to talk about them more than I need these things to happen. You know? I think 
the idea of society where we can go back to mostly natural foods and where we can do science experiments, not in the more, you know, splicing things together and seeing what happens, but more in the, you know, actually physically testing what grains do to stomach acid and how that affects what in the brain. And, you know, the stuff that we already do, but not with as much fervor. Because we're too distracted with things that just don't matter. Like extending the lives of people who live past 100. And who are rich as hell and have quantity and quality abundance. And it's just it's not fair. We all know it's not fair. But maybe there's something we can do about it. Much love.